Hey everyone, welcome back to another devlog from my game that I'm currently calling Project TRS, which is an RPG sim style game kind of like Mountain Blade meets Stardew Valley, but with tower defense style battles. In the last devlog I talked about building the quest and dialogue system for my game, so in this one we're going to continue in a similar vein with NPC schedules. The basic goal of this system is to make NPCs feel more alive and make your game world in general feel less static and lifeless. There are various ways to achieve this. Really old games just have characters walk around randomly, which I think is actually fine for games where most of the NPCs in a town aren't really important characters and just have a few lines of dialogue. A more complicated solution would be to implement a GOP algorithm, or Goal-Oriented Action Planning, which is a system that basically gives NPCs various wants and needs that change over time, and depending on the priority and severity, they'll take different actions to solve those wants and needs. This is kind of what The Sims does. Now this would be super cool and fun to code, but it would also blow the scope of my game up by at least 10 times. So I think a solution that Stardew Valley and many other indie games implemented, where the NPCs have a set schedule of places they need to be at certain times, is a good middle ground. It's fairly easy to implement, and I think it accomplishes the goal of making the NPCs feel alive fairly well. At a very high level, the way this will work in my game is, each day the NPC will load a schedule for that day with optional parameters like if it's raining or if it's their birthday or something. Then they'll wait for the first event they're scheduled to happen, then they'll act on that event. Generally they'll just be walking to a new location, but there's also the possibility of them doing other stuff like playing an animation or something. The things involved in making this work are, a way for the NPCs to know what time it is, a way for the NPCs to navigate to new positions, and a way to keep track of the events in the schedule. I've already built a very basic time system, so it shouldn't be too difficult to hook into that to get the NPCs to act at certain times. My time system operates on chunks that represent 10 in-game minutes, so to figure out a time, I just have to start at 6am and count up in 10 minute intervals until I get to the time that I want. I have a singleton that emits a signal every time a chunk passes, so I can just connect to that signal and compare the current time to the event time, and if they're the same, I can start the event. Now, pathfinding is pretty easy to implement in Godot. It has a pretty robust built-in pathfinding system. Basically, all you have to do is set up your navigation mesh, which sounds really complicated, but it's basically just a shape that determines where the NPC is allowed to walk. Then you determine your endpoint, and Godot will give you a path to that point within your navigation mesh. I think the best way to store the events will be in custom resources. That way I can edit the content within the editor itself. First version of this system is going to be pretty limited, so the only things I need to store are the time the event starts and the position the NPC NPC needs to walk to. Something that kind of complicates the whole system is inter-scene pathfinding. For example, let's say our NPC Bob has an event to go into his house at noon and take a nap. Our system works just having Bob walk to his front door at a certain time, but what happens when he walks into his house? Does he just teleport straight to the bed to nap? That would feel pretty weird if you followed directly behind him and he teleported, you know? A possible solution for this is to simulate the NPC walking along the path even when the NPC isn't loaded into the current scene. What this would amount to is a system where I'm constantly tracking the NPC's position and a bit of state separate of the actual NPC implementation that you'll see and interact with. This means that when the NPC is loaded in, it only handles player interaction and animation, so there's a lot of separation of concerns. Maybe it's just the software engineer in me, but this kind of back-end API and front-end UI pattern feels pretty intuitive to me. Speaking of software engineering, a great way to learn software engineering is by using the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant.org. Brilliant is where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. The way Brilliant is designed makes it uniquely effective in learning. Instead of just watching lecture videos or memorizing a bunch of random stuff, you'll learn by doing. Each lesson has tons of hands-on examples that let you play with the concepts and strengthen your problem solving. Brilliant has a bunch of great programming courses, and they're adding more all the time. They've got a really cool course that teaches you how to think like a programmer, so instead of just focusing on one language, you'll learn the fundamentals of programming that apply to all languages. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 full days, visit brilliant.org slash develops, scan the QR code, or click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring the video. I think the solution of tracking the NPC's positions in the background is a good one, but it's also a complicated one, and I don't think it's necessary for the first vertical slice of the game. So to keep things simple, I'm just going to have all the NPCs stay in the same scene so I don't have to worry about inter-scene navigation. So with everything put together, here's the NPC schedule system in its entirety. I'm going to speed up the footage just for demonstration purposes. And that's pretty much the whole system, and I'm really happy with it. It's pretty simple now, but I think it's a really good foundation. I think the game is really starting to take shape, which is cool to see. 
I think the next thing I'm going to tackle is combat, and then we'll be really close to a vertical slice demo, which is awesome. Thanks again for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. Also, let me know what you think in the comments. I read all of them, and it's always nice to hear from you guys. See you next time.